I told you before, to explain the results of that I, I already I already presented to you. And uh, now we do some strong assumptions. We assume that uh, the fluid move, moves on the plane, like this table here, and we have a fluid over the plane. Uh, the dynamic <coughs> is uh, homogeneous, stationary, without subsidence or any kind of things like this, and the molecular viscosity is neglected. What does it mean with respect to the uh, to the Navier-Stokes equation is that we can sell all these terms, mostly the whole equation. <coughs> what is surviving? The only thing surviving is that uh, the fluid, the product of the fluctuation of the velocity, the u is the velocity over the horizontal, the negative the horizontal uh, over the, the vertical, uh, uh, is uh, equal to zero. This means that this stuff here is constant. So we start in the treating of our problem of, uh, of uh, evaporation and transpiration, which from this point of view is the transport of humidity in the atmosphere, not the emission of humidity of the atmosphere, but on that side we will talk later. Because there is actually this, uh, this these two meanings. When we talk about evapor evaporation and transpiration, we talk about the flux from a surface. But when we go to treat it, we uh, we, uh, we treat here like a, a movement, the budget of the momentum, which is kind of different. So um, on these things. U1, uh, baby one or U1 asterisk uh, first is constant. Uh, what we can be Frank did, did some hypothesis that he then he tested on measurements, experiment, on experiment. And the hypothesis was that uh, you can substitute to, to fluctuation spatial gradients of spatial difference of the same quantity. So instead of uh, delta U first, Q first, you get delta U, which is, uh, and you also here assume that uh, uh, omega first is proportional to the, the gradients of the horizontal velocity and proportional to something. And uh, uh, Q first is uh, proportional to delta Q which is, as you can see, a strong assumption that uh, in, in, in a sort in a, say, in a sort is similar to say that uh, space and time are kind of entangled and then he uh, went to, uh, to do experiment to prove these things then we have coefficient uh, uh, in front of it GH, which is the standard <coughs> number uh, CD, which is the drag number, and CE, which is the Dalton number for Each one is a coefficient that has to do with uh, the particular phenomenon that we have to fix, and here we have also the density of, of the air. Uh, for the Present derivation, we assume that all these coefficients are equal, which is not. But uh, it, it simplifies. Oh, later on, I will I will remove this uh, this assumption, and then uh, uh, <coughs> understanding what are these coefficients, how we can calculate these uh, coefficients that are in here, careers of uh, scientists. Then, but as you see, the the theory is pretty much very simplified. Uh, <coughs> we have true expression for the shear stress because rho, rho w1 uh, um, w1 1 
is actually the shear stress that uh, the fluid makes on, on the plane where it is moving. Uh, so we know that this constant, so this brought historically to define a, a velocity, which is called friction velocity, and say that, okay, this, uh, the shear stress is equal to rho, which is the density of the air in this case, uh, square the, 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 the horizontal velocity. And this is a definition right now, it's not adding anything to our knowledge. And on the other side, we have also this definition of how the stress, which is rho C D or C, U squared. The fact that both of the expressions are valid, let's say by definition in a sense, because U, U star, the friction velocity is a definition, is a fictional quantity that we introduced, means that uh, the coefficient C is equal to U star U star squared to U bar squared. This we know. This we know from a, uh, because we measure velocity. This we still don't know what it is. Experiment says about uh, the estimation of uh, the friction velocity tend to, uh, to, this is a quite complicated actually, diagram from uh, McDonald, a nice book on turbulence, nice, uh, uh, con con concise, but also concise, but also interesting. It seems to say that uh, there is a first viscous layer where the velocity, this is a lot of plot, uh, the, the quantity are actually normalized, so it's not so apparent, but uh, when you have a line here, you have a logarithmic, it uh, means that the curve is logarithmic. Very close to the boundary, you have a linear, which is actually a linear behavior. Then we have a range, which is called inertia, inertia sublayer, where the profile of the velocity goes more or less logarithmic. And then we have other things. So, in the what we see is that the turbulence velocity is increasing linearly here, and then this is this profile, which is now in literature as logarithmic profile. This is mostly an empirical result. It doesn't derive from the Navier-Stokes equations. Even if recently some Chinese did some very sophisticated st uh, study about, uh, using Lie algebras to show that this behavior can actually be derived under the assumption I did before directly formed from the Navier-Stokes equation. So, all this story is to say that, I, sorry, that uh, the velocity profile for us is the one that we see up there, which is the velocity u is equal to what? u star, the friction velocity, divided by k, which is the, the so-called von Karman constant, which are, which are not so sure that it is really constant, but it is around 0 0.4, 0 0.41, and the logarithm of what? Of the distance from the surface of the plane we are studying, where C0 is a, the, a starting displacement, because the logarithm profile cannot start from zero, the logarithm of zero is minus infinity, and z is the actual quote. Uh, uh, quote. And here, zeta d is uh, the uh, roughness of the system. Very classical, very classical way to treat the, the argument, but it's quite interesting to know because then we use as a, it is the, the truth. Instead, the truth is uh, for what we can say uh, the navier stokes equation, from which this is a, we derive this one with, with a lot of simplification. So you start as a, this expression, finally. As if you start as this expression, the friction coefficient that we know is a u star squared divided by the average of u is a, has this inverse logarithm formula with the square on, on top. 
So our coefficient, drag coefficient, our uh, uh, Dalton coefficient, and our Stanton coefficient in, in first, at first are have this form here. <coughs> so when we go to put, uh, uh, we, I rewrite the equations and I say that tau, the moment transport and minus rho c u square, where now c has this form, h is rho c, which is the, the drag coefficient, whenever I assume that the drag coefficient and the and the standard coefficient at the same time CP, which is the specific um, 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 specific heat for unit mass, and uh, at constant pressure will be, and U is the velocity, and uh, and the, the gradient that is moving uh, the transport, the, uh, the turbulent transport of uh, heat is or the thermal transfer of energy if you if you prefer is proportional to the difference of temperature between Z0 the surface and C which is the core. So it e, from this point of view which is just the view of uh, transporting the things we don't know how evaporation is generated on the surface we just assume we have it and then we move away, and uh, what is moving uh, is moving away is the difference in specific humidity in this case, or the concentration of humidity if you prefer. So we have some formula. This formula are essentially tied to the momentum equation. They are the momentum equation for these these things. Are the derived from the second law of dynamics? No more. But here, there is nothing about the physics of how evaporation happens in the surface. It's just transport. But this is not open clear. Uh, sometimes, instead of using C, we use it reciprocal, which is called a resistance. And uh, we will see later on, because we will use in this case. In particular, this formula here is called uh, aerodynamic resistance. In other cases, uh, we have uh, other, other formula complicated. But for instance, here, we assume that the atmosphere is homogeneous. It's, it's not really homogeneous. It's uh, and, and stable, stable atmosphere. It can be unstable. In that case, if it is unstable, we can have a, a correction to this factor here. Yes. For instance, someone known correction as the Monbukov corrections. And uh, the same thing for stable. How does it work over the surface then? Over the surface, we have the wind that is moving the transport. But uh, we have to deal with the roughness of the surfaces. We have some recipes from literature. This is from Dingma. And this is that the Z0 is uh, one, 0 0.1, the height of vegetation. And, uh, and ZD is 0 0.7, the height of vegetation. This is a, a final recipe. So actually, for the drag coefficient, we have numbers. You know, Z0, ZD. If we have the height of vegetation, we can take over these values. Are they correct? Not really. But they are standard choices for them. Uh, I introduced also the specific humidity before, which is the ratio of uh, the, of, of the, the quantity, of the concentration of humidity, but sometimes it, it is uh, estimated through A, which is the partial vapor pressure, and P here is the pressure of uh, the air, and epsilon in front is the ratio between 0 0.6 to 2, which is the ratio between the dry and the, and the, and the wet um, 
uh, um, constant, uh, uh, air constant um, fa um, factors. So we can also express a T as a function of the difference of pressure, of vapor pressure at different points. And then obviously you can express also pressures in different, uh, with different unit and all. This is known as Dalton law, is in, is in, is in, it is one of the building blocks for, for our treatment of the stuff. So if I would be a, a one working in atmospheric physics or, or a land atmosphere interaction, actually the first thing I, I would do is to uh, question if I can really use this one. And how to, if there are other, form of simplification of the, of this, of the, the real stokes equation that are more close to reality, especially when we have, for instance, different height of vegetation and things like that. There is quite a bunch of literature, obviously, on that. But they didn't percolate very much in the practice of estimation of evaporation. Um, what are, how have we to, uh, to read this formula? If we have now difference in, in Q, Q uh, there is nothing, nothing move, no, no movement. If QZ is larger than, uh, QZ0 is larger than QZ, we have a movement upward of water vapor. So the one we really know as evaporation or transpiration, and uh, in, if you have the other uh, way around, we have a movement from the atmosphere down, which is the position of uh, or, uh, a different way of movement. So not necessarily a surface evaporate. A surface can also receive, obviously, I would say, water vapor. Uh, Sometimes I didn't talk so far about what is Q0, Q0. Q0 uh, is just the uh, specific humidity at the surface, not specific, specific information about what Q0 is. And in many practical formula, Q0 is substituted by Q0 star. Then Q0 star is a so-called uh, specific humidity at saturation or at equilibrium, which is driven by the Clausius-Clapeyron equation. And this uh, only a function of temperature. When we do this, uh, we solve some problems, but then we introduce other problems, because in this case, we assume that uh, the surface is always wet. And uh, the surface always gives, uh, gives us enough water to be evaporated. So we, uh, as we see later, we, I, I, deal, I dealt just with the momentum equation right now, but we also have to deal with the energy equation and the mass budget equation. Actually, I will not talk very much about the mass budget equation, but the three equation has to be fulfilled at the same time. So. When I say evaporative transpiration has to follow this law, I, I, I just say a third of the truth. It follow this equation, the energy budget equations, and the mass conservation equation. And when we do this hypothesis, one important consequence is that we throw away the mass conservation equation because we assume to have water enough. And, and uh, from another uh, way to say the thing, uh, in this case, evapotranspiration is just energy limited. We have the pumping energy into the, our surface, and uh, if we pump more energy, we have more evaporation, <coughs> and we have no limitation, for instance, because there is no water. If there is no water, we don't evaporate anything, obviously. But it's so obvious that in many models, ideological models, there is not this thing. We 
just pump out water always. So, uh, as I told you before and, and I showed before, also we have a, an analogous law for the, for the sensible heat. And this is also important because in a while we got to write the, uh, the energy budget and this is also a component of the energy budget. From the unit point of view, H is transport of thermal energy. From the other point of view, we don't know yet. Uh, we, we say is transport of something. I say that is transport of momentum. But we can say also evaporation in another, uh, in another way in a while. These are all the quantities defined. If you want later on to to redo all the calculation by yourself and this and this part, what is the rationale? So the first thing is that we assume to have uh, something pumping the water vapor, uh, something transporting water vapor. The formula I, I just introduced is just the transport of water vapor. I have uh, has nothing to do with the generation of water vapor. And the generation of water vapor in instead have to do essentially with two, th two things. The quantity of energy that is necessary to uh, produce evaporation, the presence of water to evaporate, and uh, all, all, those, all those things I will talk later on. And actually, this is how the presence of water is generated because is not actually the same to get water from a plant, to get water from a, a lake, or to get the water from the soil. But because uh, we uh, uh, hydrologists are ignorant of uh, how this complex phenomenon work, works, sorry, uh, we, call, we put all together and we call it evapotranspiration. We do all the uh, minestrone, we say, in Italiano. And a soup, we do a soup all together. And then, uh, if, if we start already with the soup, then we want, you know, you have this soup. Now you want to take away the components. It's difficult. Entropy works there. And it's difficult to adjust the soup, the soup if you want to change it. So one part of changing the soup starts from here. 